Replay360's visual timeline has two parallel tracks where you can arrange your media clips, change their timing and duration, and mix them with picture-in-picture -picture effects. And in this tutorial, we'll take a look at using the timeline in Replay360. Let's begin with rearranging objects on the timeline. Now to change the order of the objects on the same track, just simply drag them left or right to an open space. So for example, if I wanted to put this opening clip right here to a different spot, I can just click and drag. And now I can drop it over here at the very end. So that's how you can rearrange your clips. I'm going to undo that real quick. Now when you're rearranging clips or when you're making your edits, which we'll continue looking at, you have a couple different ways to set the transition be between the, uh, the clips. Now in this first example, you'll see right here we have a diagonal line between this opening image and then the first video. A diagonal line just indicates that it's going to be a soft crossfade where the image or the clip fades into the other. So here's what this looks like. Hey everyone, Dave Anderson here. So you see that really soft fade right there. Now this other example where the vertical line is as straight as opposed to the diagonal indicates it's going to be a hard cut. It's going to be a very abrupt cut. And the reason you may want to do this, for example, this is why I did it, was I actually had a mistake in here that I had to edit out and I didn't really want to make it so obvious by fading and cross, cross fading. And then you'll see the two different cursors here. By using the hard cut, it actually happens so fast that hopefully, until now, because I pointed it out, most people will uh, miss it. So here's what this looks like. To challenge number one. So again, it doesn't matter. What right, so there's a, uh, you can see that the cursor jumps, but if I had faded it, we would have seen the cursor up here and then down here, and it would have drawn a little bit more attention to it. So just a couple different ways that uh, those, those transitions can be applied. Just drag this clip, drag one clip into the other clip, and you get that diagonal line for the crossfade or let it uh, set it so it's vertical and then you get a, a, a hard cut. Now you can also move video clips, audio clips, and images between the two media tracks, anything that you've imported. So for example, if I jump back here to the beginning, I've got this image right here. Well, I could move this down to any open spot on my timeline. And then likewise, if I brought in another image, I could also bring it in. Reason you might wanna do that is if you wanna create a picture in picture effect between video or images, that you've uh, imported, that you didn't record in replay, but that you've imported uh, to augment your project. So just a way that you also have that control to move those imported assets between the two tracks. And then finally, one other thing you can do on the timeline here is you can just delete objects. You can select them, press delete on your keyboard, or you can right click and just choose delete selected objects, and that quickly removes them from your timeline. And then of course, control Z will also uh, bring them back. Now to change the timing of an object, you just click and drag it to reposition it along the timeline. So for example, in this last clip, if I wanted this uh, clip to come out a little bit later in the video, I can just drag it to the right, and I'm now adjusting uh, the time in which it appears. Same thing if I wanted to move it closer, and I'm just going to bring it in earlier. Now you'll notice that as you click and drag these, as you get close to other objects, you get this little vertical uh, line. It's a nice guide for telling you that you're a perfectly aligned with another object. So in this case, with the lower third, you can see that the uh, beginning of each clip is perfectly aligned so that they'll, uh, they're enter, they'll enter the same time. Now, if I drag it out, I can also align it with the beginning of my B mix track. So you can see that I can align it to the beginning of the B mix track or once the B is fully in, right? So if I wanted to get it right at the beginning or once the B track actually starts. So just a nice way to uh, perfectly and precisely align your objects along the timeline. Now, if you want to reduce an object's duration, say for example, you wanted to uh, remove part of it, you can actually click and drag the end of it and then drag inward, right? So if I drag in, it's gonna actually shorten that clip. Now, if you do that, you're actually going to trim or remove part of the video. So if I scroll in here a little bit, in this case, I actually might wanna do that because I can see right here that there is no audio right here, right? So I left, obviously I did a couple of different takes here and I left a little bit of uh, silence here before I actually began my recording. So if I listen to this part right here, press the space key. Okay. Right. So I'm just talking to myself saying, okay. So clearly this is where I actually begin. We link to your, okay. So what I might do is just set my playhead here and then I will bring these in and snap it into place right there. And I trunc truncate the beginning part of my clip and then I could bring it over here and make this uh, a seamless clip between the two, and I'll get rid of all that extra dead space or, or silence at the beginning of my clip. 
All right, so next let's look at how Replay 360 lets you mix your videos and images, and then how you can control those tracks in the timeline so that they interact with one another. And that's really where Replay shines. So I'm gonna zoom out here just a little bit, and it's gonna drag the timeline out so we can see everything. Now, if you know, notice up here in the mix track, you see that we have several different mixes. And this is basically telling Replay how you want your video to play. So if I click in up here in the playhead, you can see that my A track is my, my screencast track. And you can see that right here, the blue corresponds to the blue. And if I move it over just a little bit, there's the video, which is the webcam, and that's the B. So at any point when I'm going through my tutorials, I can just move the playhead up and then come up here to my mix tracks. And I've got four different tracks that I can add. So this first one, the A and B, this is a picture in picture. I'm gonna go ahead and click it. And what this will do, if I bring it over here, it presents the A track as the primary track and then the B track, let me just move it a little bit away from my lower third, the B becomes the picture in picture, right? The secondary track. If I want a full A track, I can actually just select this and then say, let's change it to A. So it's gonna show just the desktop view, right? Which is my screen recording view. And of course, I can come in here and then change it to full B. And there's the webcam video and then so on, right? So you can change these on the fly as you're watching your video. So for example, if I were uh, playing, pressing play, now you are the most and I got in here, and maybe I wanted to change this you would, uh, to a different track, in. did I already go? However, just click the button yeah. once, and I can quickly make that, make that edit. Now when you're working with the picture in picture, you can actually change the location of where the secondary picture appears. So by default, you can see it's in the bottom right corner. And if I look over here in the picture in picture quadrant, you can see where you can change the location of that video. So if you want in the bottom left, top left, top right, and so on. So it's a nice uh, way to kind of customize where that secondary image goes. I'm just going to put it back here in the bottom right. Now, just like we did with object clips, we can also adjust the timing of our mixes. And the same thing applies. Just drag the edge of one of the mixes, and you can see that you can adjust how far out or how uh, the duration of it. If you want to make it longer, you want to make it shorter. And you also have the same vertical guide that we saw earlier, right? So if you want to align something with another object, in this case, the, the lower third up top, or if you wanted to align it with another clip in the, uh, the timeline, you also get that. So that's how easy it is to adjust how long something appears on the slide. So in this case, right, my A is my primary, which is the desktop screencast. And then, well, this is one that we just changed. So I'm going to delete that one. And maybe I want to bring the full video on quicker. So right, so here's my AB, and then it transitions quickly to the A correspond with the lower third. If I want the lower third to come in a moment after my full track, I can do that as well too. So that just means it comes in about a half second or so, a couple seconds before the lower third. All right, and then finally, I want to show you a couple tips for just working more efficiently in replay. And that is, one of the things you're going to do a lot is just zoom in really close to an object here and then pull back out to see how it looks as, as, as a total project and then zoom in really closely to maybe make an edit, remove a breath or or a really fine, you know, just remove a frame or two from a, from a video clip. Well, by default, you have this uh, little zoom option here where you can click and drag the slider to zoom in and out. And that totally works great. But when you're really working on the project, one of the things I like to do is to keep my eye focused on my, my video, my video tracks, right? Rather than having to take them off and then come down here and look at the, uh, at the little icons. So what you can do is just use your scroll wheel on your mouse to move up and up, down, right, forward or, or backward to zoom in and out. And I'm doing this all the time when I'm working on my projects. It really makes it easy to quickly get in there. So you see if I bring my, my clip here, wherever I play at the playhead, that's going to let me zoom in. If I wanted to come in here and maybe silence some audio, right, or just make a really, really fine cut, that, that zooming wheel really makes a big, big difference. Um, of course, the zoom slider is still available, but uh, one of the things I like to do is just keep my eyes focused more forward on the project and then uh, use the, the shortcut on the, on the mouse to, to zoom in and out. The other shortcut I'm using a lot is the space bar. So just press the space bar and you can play the, the, the video, set. press it again, and you'll pause it. So the space bar is a really invaluable keyboard uh, shortcut for just checking out how your edits went, right? So drag the playhead where you want to see something, maybe the crossfade right here, press it. And there you go. And then it's just a quick way to preview it without having to come up here each time to uh, press the play button. And that's a big picture overview of working with the timeline and your media clips 
in Replay 360. So give it a try. Play with uh, a few clips of your own. Try the edits. Try the extending and, and shortening the duration of clips. As always, if you have any questions, please jump in the forums, post your question, and we'll be more than happy to uh, jump in and, and help you out.